Hey everyone, David here. Real quick, uh, before we start the video, um, this video was really long and so I cut it into two parts and I didn't plan for that initially. <laughs> but of course, this is a video on the uh, worst perfume books out there. It's the first of a two-part series. The next one's going to be on the best uh, perfume books out there. If you want to try these anyway, I'll have a link down below to uh, Audible where you can go and get these on audiobook. Anyway, let's start the video on worst perfume books. Hey, Fragrance family, I'm Dave with the Fragrance Bros. Of course, your best source for everything fragrance related. Now, I'm a reader, I love to read. I read about 30 to 40 books every year. I try to read even more than that, but that's usually my average. Of course, I've looked everywhere for uh, perfume books, and as of now, I've read almost everything that has that is currently available. All right, now the first book I wanna mention is a go-to book that I think a lot of people, especially now, are looking at, and that is Perfumes the Guide by Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez. This is, I think, the first guide book that they have, and they have, currently, they have a new one, the, the Guide 2018 and I've read about half of that one. It's an excellent resource to go to for someone's opinion on a fragrance that is not on YouTube. But you have to take it with a grain of salt. They come across, um, I think, as really snobby and uh, really snooty and snide, all the S words apparently. <laughs> I think a lot of times they're crazy. I don't agree with their opinions, but more so, I disagree with how they describe their opinions, not just with their opinions. A lot of times they're looked at, especially Luca Turin, as an authority in the fragrance world, and I don't think that at all. I think he's just a guy with a loud mouth and um, the ability to publish a book. Good for him, but it's not amazing. If you can borrow the book, that's what you need to do. It's really only good as a resource for looking something up. It's not interesting to read front from cover to cover. Um, I've tried that and I've given up each time. I get about halfway through and I just give up because it's, it's tedious. All right, next is What the Nose Knows by Avery Gilbert. Um, and this one is one that I had mixed feelings about. It's kind of a scientific type of book told in um, a kind of casual way. And in some ways it is interesting, but in other ways I found that I just disliked the author's opinions about things. <laughs> For instance, he had a criticism of one, uh, one book that I'll mention in a little bit that is a novel. And he disliked the novel based on the premise of the novel itself, which was kind of a supernatural sense of smell, which he didn't like because it wasn't scientific. So I just thought that was kind of weird by itself. That's just one example of many that he comes across in here, but it's not amazing, but I think it's still worth reading. Next is Coming to My Senses by Alyssa Herod. And this is one that um, a lot of people had recommended to me because it's written by a perfumista, someone that really likes perfumes like we all do. She has a, a great writing style. I really enjoyed reading the words, except I just didn't like this book. I really thought that a lot of what she had to say kind of rambled. There's aspects of it that talk about fragrances, but then it also talks about her uh, planning a wedding, which is not something that I'm really interested in, so it, it didn't really grip me there. It, was, it seemed kind of tedious in that aspect. But then other parts too, I thought she was kind of, her, her, she was kind of spilling her guts about certain parts of her life, and I thought it was just really sad. It just made me feel sorry for her. So that was not an aspect of the book that I liked at all. So I really don't recommend this book, honestly. Next is The Diary of a Nose by Jean-Claude Elena. Now this is not his first book, um, but this one is just a journal entry uh, every day that he made about fragrance. He turned that into a book. <laughs> really simple idea. Sometimes it gets really boring. I think overall this book is okay. It's not a necessary read. If you follow Jean-Claude Elena, then you might really like this. But it's just diary entries. So sometimes he's talking about fragrance that he's working that day. Sometimes it's just these esoteric thoughts that just ramble and make no sense. A lot of times the way that he writes and talks is just kind of like this purple, kind of overly poetic type of vibe that I really don't like. Um, but I thought this was okay. It's not as bad as another one that I'll get to in a minute. <laughs> All right, next is Perfume, The Alchemy of Scent by Jean-Claude Elena. This is one that I got on uh, the Kindle and I got it for a dollar. I had to get it because it was Jean-Claude Elena. I thought, I'll just, I'll just take one for the team and buy it. And take one I did because this was not a good book. Jean-Claude Elena could write a book because he's Jean-Claude Elena. He has a, a history of making great perfumes and so he has a track record there and he can make a book because he has that name. And that's really the only thing he has going for him in this book because a lot of it is dry, boring details. Half the book is just 
boring details on uh, perfumery materials and stuff. One chapter is dedicated entirely to copyright law, which I don't care about at all. And the interesting things that you're looking for in a book about from Jean-Claude Elena is just not there. There are some interesting things here and there, like he has some formulas for certain accords uh, for fragrances that I thought were really interesting, especially coming from Jean-Claude Elena, who is a master at making uh, these really minimalistic accords. But overall, uh, not a good book. All right, so let's get to some fictional books here. This one is The Book of Lost Fragrances by MJ Rose. This was okay. Um, I thought it was gonna be better than it was. It's kind of a, a light read. Some people may really like that. It does rely a lot on perfumes, especially in conjunction with this idea of reincarnation, which is in a lot of her books. A really strange correlation there, <laughs> connection. It's okay, I think, it, I, I think it's a pass. All right, next is The Perfume Collector by Kathleen Tesoro, or Tessaro. And uh, this one was dreadful. <laughs> it's rare that I get to read a book that is this bad. Usually you, you pick a book that you think that you want to read, that you'd like to read. And so finding a book that is very bad is not very common, but this one was, oh, it was terrible, terrible. It was really hard to get through and I, I could not finish it. I got through about half of it and it had little to do with perfume collecting uh, from the very start and was just droning on and on about these just mindless things. It was not good. Pass. Next is The Reason for Flowers by Stephen Buckman. And I got into this because sometimes the rabbit hole leads you down a path that you, you don't expect. And so there's several different books that I got um, in my queue that were about ingredients or types of things that are in fragrances. Flowers, of course, are vital to the, pra the fragrance world. And so he talks a little bit about that, but of course he's not really talking about the perfume world. He's talking about uh, the flowers, the plants themselves, and the lives that they have. It's okay, but it wasn't my thing. And uh, when I finished it, I was just glad to be done. The, the rabbit hole led me wrong this time. <laughs> Next is The Case Against Fragrance by Kate Grenville. Of course, I'm a fragrance lover, and when I saw this book, I was like, well, I've gotta read this. I'm not afraid of reading a book that challenges my preconceptions, so I wanted to see if there was anything in this book that would do a good job at saying that fragrances are bad or harmful. Fortunately for us, there's nothing in here <laughs> that persuaded me otherwise. This is not a good book, and it's not a good book for a lot of different reasons, but mostly because the premise of the book comes from a place of bias from someone um, that has an aversion to fragrance already. And then she kind of just tries to prove her bias over time. She tries to manipulate it to say that she's not doing that, but that's exactly what she's doing. I really want to make a video dedicated to this because it's such a crazy book, but I'll do that some other time. You can stay away from it. <laughs> not recommended. Next is Quintessentially Perfume by Natalie Granger and other authors. This was a really interesting book because it's like three different books in one, but it has a, a, an assortment of many different authors. One of them is Raja Dove, one of them is Chandler Burr, and some other other ones in there as well. Some of them, like those two, especially have some really good points that they're making. Other authors I'd never heard of and have no uh, context at all, to me, relevance uh, to the perfume world. It also goes in a really strange direction for a buying guide halfway through. I mean, I would really pass on this. It doesn't really say much that you don't already know from other books. It's so kind of haphazard the way that it's thrown together that uh, it's just a pass. With that, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Fragrance X. Fragrance X is an online retailer that sells thousands of legitimate fragrances for a discounted price. If you're considering buying a fragrance, definitely check out Fragrance X. I'll have a link down below to them as well as a coupon. So that's all I have. I hope these books uh, really helped you. Definitely go check these out. Check the links down below for all the links. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm Dave at the Fragrance Bros. Bye.